Hey everybody, this little video lesson is going to cover measurement techniques and the proper way of taking a measurement. I'm going to start off with a very open-ended direction. Just if I ask someone to measure the width of their desk, since it's such an open-ended question, there's a lot of different ways different people would do this. In fact, I've done this in my class, and here are a couple of examples of the different answers that people have reported. So three different people measured the same object with the same instrument as 63 centimeters, 63.5 centimeters, and 61 centimeters. And you might be asking yourself, well, how could all these different people get three different answers? And it comes down to the simple fact that humans make measuring errors. It's just something that's a limitation to the human. Everybody sees the same object a little bit differently, and everybody uses the instrument a little bit differently. So as scientists, we ask ourselves, what can we do to eliminate that variability in the measurements? Because the ultimate goal as a scientist is to get as close to the exact answer as possible, but also be consistent with other people that may measure the same object. So I'm going to take you through a couple of tips and a couple of tricks and techniques and how to do that. You might have thought taking measurements is just something simple. Just grab an instrument, measure, done. But in fact, the way you do it and the amount of digits used to report your answer is a big deal, at least in science. And so I'm going to talk about measurement and how it's more complex than you think. First of all, when you have an instrument in your hand, you need to know what the instrument measures, you need to know what the scale is, and you need to know what each line represents. You wouldn't use a graduated cylinder to measure the length of something, just like you wouldn't use a thermometer to measure the volume. So pick the right instrument, identify the units, and make sure you know what each line of that instrument is representing. Maybe each line of the ruler is measuring one centimeter. Maybe each line is measuring one millimeter. And you need to know that based on knowing the instrument inside and out. So when you're measuring an object, you want to use the smallest increment that the instrument will allow. If you've got very, very fine instrumentation, you've got a lot of different little measurement marks, you want to use the smallest measurement marks available. And so when you take a look at an object, you want to narrow it down between the two lines. Here's a snapshot of that measurement of the width of the desk that I was referring to on the last slide. And if I zoom in, it's pretty easy to see that there's a line uh, right here, and there's a line right here, and maybe I'll use red instead. And it's clear that the desk is between those two lines. And so what did these each line represent? Well, as I zoom out, you can see that this is the desk is somewhere between 62.9 and 63.0. And that's the first step in the measuring technique, is making sure that you report your measurement between two lines. In fact, you don't actually write this down, but you just think about it. You could do this visually. The last thing you want to do, and it's the most important thing, it's the step most kids and most people who measure don't do correctly, is you want to estimate the last place value of the measurement. What that means is, going back to my zoomed-in photo of this desk, is that I know it's between 62.9 and 63.0, and I need to estimate how far between those they are. And so since my measurement goes to one past the decimal, I report my final answer to two past the decimal. So I say it's about halfway between 0.9 and then the next line up, so I'm going to call it 62.95 centimeters. Notice how these first three numbers I know for sure, and the last number is the one that I estimated. All four of these numbers are representing the full measurement. And so this is how you do a measurement properly. You measure between the lines, and then you report your answer based on one digit past what the instrument will allow. Now, that's not to say that all instruments are going to always measure to two past the decimal. It just means that you're limited to the instrument that's provided to you. I'll show you an example of a couple of rulers in the next slide that all measure in a different scale. So this first ruler on the top measures to the tenth of a centimeter. Each one of these whole numbers 51, 52, 53, which is just at the edge of the screen here, is a centimeter, and the lines in between represent a tenth of a centimeter. So if I'm going to measure something that comes maybe like right here in between these two lines, I know that it's between 48.1234. It's between 48.4 and 48.5. And the line, then, I need to estimate. Now, of course, it's a little bit squiggly of a line, which, I you know, Assuming you had a regularly shaped object, it would be nice and flat. But if I could 
estimate how far between 48.4 and 48.5 this is, I would just simply report an answer of like 48.3, excuse me, 48.43. Now in this case, this measurement goes two past the decimal because my instrument reads to one past the decimal, so I estimate to two past the decimal. Now let me zoom out and go down to this next one. Now this next one, I have instead of every tenth of a centimeter, I have a centimeter. So counting from the right now, 50, 51, 52, 53. So this line is between 52 and 53. Now this is a less precise instrument, but it's the instrument that's in front of me, so I have to use it. Now I'm not just going to simply report this answer to two past the decimal like I did on the one above, because I don't know where the tenth of a centimeter is. I know where each centimeter is. So then I report this answer to one past the decimal. I know it's between 52 and 53, so I call it 52.4. I chose 0.4 because it's not quite to the halfway point, it's just less than halfway. So it's an educated guess. You kind of gauge how far between the lines it is and report a number that m seems to make sense. Now this last one is the least precise of all. Now I'm gonna choose a line up here. What if I'm measuring and uh, this object starting from zero up to this point. Now this time I know every 10 centimeters, so it's between 60 and 70. And by my estimation, it's a little over halfway between 60 and 70, so I'm gonna call it 66 centimeters. And the reason I chose that again is because I did an estimation, it's over halfway, but it's just past halfway, so 66 seems to be about just right. Now. Taking a step back, each three of these rulers measure, once again, at different precisions, and so my answer can only be as precise as the instrument in front of me. So you need to like, make that judgment call. When the instrument's in front of you, you have to first identify what each line means, then you need to measure between two lines, and then finally estimate the last place value. The same rules can be applied to measuring different volumes. You see in front of you two, excuse me, three graduated cylinders, and each one represents a little bit different scale. Now I've drawn in some fairly bad lines to represent levels of liquid in red, but I think you'll be able to get the picture. This first one measures every line as a milliliter, and that means every line between the large lines is two tenths or 0.2 milliliters. And that means that halfway between the lines is, a, is 0.1 milliliter. So if I'm looking at this right here, I'm gonna zoom in on it, if I'm looking at this first one, I know that this line right here represents 6.6 .6 and this line represents 6.8. So it's between 6.6 .6 and 6.8. And it's close to the 6.6 .6 line. If it were halfway between, if it was somewhere in this region, like right in the middle, it would be 6.7. But it's closer to 6.6. .6. So I estimate this to be 6.62, let's say. And that's my answer. Again. I estimate the last place value. I know kind of where the 6.6 .6 line is, and I think it's just above, but not quite halfway, so I call it 6.62. Now this next one is kind of an awful line. Maybe if I get a chance here, I can erase it and redraw a line that's a little bit better. But it's worth noting that, remember, when you measure volume, you measure from the bottom of the meniscus, so the lowest point. You don't measure from the, the top edges because those are going to be higher than the, or further up the column than the point you want to measure. You want to measure at the minimum. So now I'm looking and I say, all right, each line here, this is 60 and this is 70, and there are nine lines between that, so that must make each one of these lines equal to one milliliter. If that's the case, then this is 61 and this is 62. So I know my line is between 61 and 62 and I estimate how far between it. So it's not quite halfway, I'm gonna call it 61.3 milliliters. And finally, this next one, which is the largest column that I have where each line represents two milliliters, if you look closely. This line represents 130 and this is 150, that makes this line 140. It's not written there, but I can write it in. This is 140, so each line represents two milliliters. So I look and closely and go, all right, so if this is 140, 42, 44, 46, so it's between 144 and 146. And by uh, my estimation, and if I'm looking all the way across here, 
the line comes down, but not quite touching the 144 line. If I were to like move this line over horizontally, it would not quite touch that line. It approaches it. So I'd, again, I'd say it's just above 144. So I know it's between 144 and 146. In fact, I narrowed it down. It, it's between 144 and 145, because halfway between those two lines would be 145. So I'm going to call it 144.4 milliliters. So zooming back out, again, like the rulers I just showed you on the last slide, they may have different scales. Graduated cylinders definitely come with different scales. You may encounter different graduated cylinders depending on their thickness with lines that mean different things. So the first step in that process of measuring is one of the most important. Well, in fact, they're all important, but that first one is extremely important because it helps you determine what each line means because then you can proceed from there. So these last few examples have some more practice that we can do and we'll tackle them each individually. Let's take a look at this graduated cylinder. So each line here represents one milliliter. If this is 30, this is 40, and there's nine lines between, that means each line is one milliliter. So I know that this is between 36 and 37, and I estimate it to be 36.7, because it's closer to the 36 line than it is to the 37 line. Excuse me, it's closer to the 37 line than it is to the 36 line. I'd say it's over halfway. So I estimate that at 36.7 milliliters. Move over here to this ruler. This ruler is measuring in centimeters. Each line is a millimeter. That's what this mm stands for, which means that this is a centimeter and this is a centimeter. You get the idea. So this line over here is measuring between 3.7 and 3.8 centimeters. So I estimate. Now it depends on where you decide you to measure from. Should you measure from the front edge of the line? Should you measure from the back edge of the black line? Or like right down the middle? I usually tend to measure from the very forwardmost point of the line. And so I'm going to say it's closer to 3.8 than it is to 3.7. So I'm going to call it 3.78 centimeters. That's my answer there. Let's just go down because it's easy for me to scroll down. This one is going to come and approach. And I would say even touch. Maybe not. Actually, it's just above the line. So each one of these is a milliliter, excuse me, a milliliter, six milliliters, seven milliliters. So this means 6.1, 6.2, 6.3. So it's between 6.3 and 6.4, which means, and it's just above 6.3, so I'll call it 6.31 milliliters. And finally, scroll over. You may come across other instruments that are measuring an analog, and this happens to be a thermometer. Let's call this degrees Celsius. Degrees Celsius. So each line here represents um, six, well, this first one is 60 degrees Celsius, and this one's 80 degrees Celsius, so that makes this one 70 degrees Celsius. So I can write it in. That means each one of these is 2 degrees. 2 degrees, 2 degrees, 2 degrees, 2 degrees. So if this is coming across here, it's between 60 uh, six and 68. So 66 to 68 is kind of my, my target. And what if I say it's like right on, right in between, halfway between? Let's just say, for example, I estimate this is halfway between. So I think it's 67 and it's right on 67. Now this is an important point and it's worth m mentioning because it will come up. If you think something lies right on the line and that line is a whole number like this, then you need to estimate the last place value. And not putting a number here would be incorrect. So I would simply say it's right on the line. I'm going to call it 67.0. Now, in terms of the actual value, 67 is the same as 67.0. They mean the same thing. But this one is measured more precisely. 0, 0.0 means that it is exactly on the line. And if it's ever exactly touching the line, the last estimated digit is zero. So I'm going to call this 67.0 because it lies directly on the line. Now that'll come up every once in a while, maybe 5 to 10% of the time, you'll come across a measurement that you think is directly on the line. No matter what the scale of the instrument is, if you think it's on the line, the last digit that you estimate is zero and should be zero. Don't leave off the zero because that means you didn't measure it properly. Anyway, 
This is the video lesson for proper measurement technique. Thanks for listening.